Hi everyone. It is September 18, 2018. This is a very good article and I'm going to read excerpts from it. The Social Media Purge and How It Affects Everyone. And then I'm going to get on to 5G and what is happening in the UK with the 5G well uh, locking up in psychiatric hospitals, people who go to their GP and talk about their symptoms and how they may be related to 5G or the microwaves, as well as the a local government gagging a 5G activist, or should I say a 5... Uh, an activist who opposes 5G. But it goes along with this article here and what is taking place. And the censorship is getting tighter and tighter every single day. An interesting fact is that it it's not just conservative voices that are being silenced. It is dissenting voices. So I will listen to, you know, these radio talk shows and they're constantly talking about how the conservative voice is being um, censored. That is not true. Everyone who is dissenting from the official narrative is being silenced. So I'm really glad that Daisy Luther brought this up and wrote this article. It's the voices of critical thinkers whose ideas run the gamut of philosophies who find that they no longer have much in the way of reach. Dissenting information is silenced. Young people who are avid consumers of social media are being literally brainwashed because they only see one side of the story, any story. And I've received comments from subscribers and I have experienced this myself on a lot of search engines. When I am searching a topic that is anti-global warming or climate change, most of the results on the first page are pro-climate change, global warming. Searches on YouTube now, page after page, the first pages are the authoritative sources. We all know that YouTube is pushing the authoritative news. So what you get is mainstream media videos. Just you, you go down the entire page and you might see you know, one that is not mainstream, but it's not so... Um, it really doesn't pertain to the search words that you have put in. So, when I say that this is happening more and more, I mean it. And I think a lot of you have experienced this. But social media purge harms websites that post non-establishment information because it stamps out their ability to reach readers who would be interested in their content and the unfairly biased search results show people who are trying to learn more about a topic only one side of the information. Like it or not, social media is a monumental source of information these days, and when it's censored to only show one point of view, the future of our republic is in peril. Well, I'd like to say to Daisy that we don't have a republic anymore. It was in peril a hundred years ago, or even a hundred fifty years ago. But we still had the pretense of a republic. And that was then, you know, when we should have been fighting to save the republic. The republic is gone. You know, we don't have a Tenth Amendment anymore. 
we have a military industrial complex that controls not only our country, but pretty much the world. The CIA controls Western media outlets and no doubt non-Western media outlets. But the Tenth Amendment is gone. The states, they, they just, they capitulate to whatever the federal government wants. Um, so, we are well on our way to peak censorship, and this has been carefully orchestrated. Non-establishment websites are in trouble. Website traffic is plummeting. And I also get an awful lot of comments from subscribers that you're not getting any notifications, and I, I'm sure it's not just on my channel. Um, and view numbers are sinking on so many channels. Their posts on social media are not presented to the public, or even the people who deliberately opted to follow, follow them. So that it's not just uh, websites, but it's also um, pages on Facebook and YouTube channels, Twitter, as she points out. But I believe this is Facebook. I'm not sure. She says that um, this is her page. She has more than 30,000 people who choose to follow her page. It's the organic prepper. 30,000 are... Okay, this is Facebook. Likes, 30,724. And on average, she'll get 3,192 or 3,000 3, um, people who have actually uh, clicked on things that she posts on Facebook. Well, when you look at the subscriber numbers, and then you look at the number of views. There is a huge, huge uh, disparity between the two. And the same thing goes for social media like Twitter. I really have to wonder, will our offensive websites one day just disappear, scrubbed from the internet permanently? Yes. That is the direction that we're headed. It's obvious. Unless people stand up, but I'm sorry, we just don't have the numbers. Um, Twitter recently banned 70 million accounts claiming they were fake, but there were repeated accusations that conservative accounts had been at the very least shadow banned, if not all out deleted. And she talks about Alice, Alex Jones and however much, you know, one, you know, can't stand Alex Jones. Well, that doesn't matter. To just outright delete channels and websites and Twitter accounts and Facebook pages claiming that these are private companies and they can do whatever they want? Bull! That is, they're not private com companies. And I wish people would just do the research to find out that our national security, our intelligence agencies, the CIA, and our government were behind Google, Facebook, And it was to collect an awful lot of private information on individuals in the United States, but all over the world. So a little allegory on becoming an unperson. Think back to high school lit class when you read 1984 by George Orwell. And I'm going to read some of what she has um, excerpted from 1984. Winston Smith is a low-ranking member of the ruling party in London, in the nation of Oceania. Everywhere Winston goes, even his own home, the party watches him through telescreens, telescreens, 
Everywhere he looks, he sees the face of the party's seemingly ominous uh, leader, a figure known only as Big Brother. The party controls everything in Oceana, even the people's history and language. Currently, the party is forcing the implementation of an invented language called Newspeak which attempts to prevent political rebellion by eliminating all words related to it. Even thinking rebellious thoughts is illegal. Such thought crime is, in fact, the worst of all crimes. That's exactly where we are headed. 5G, the rollout of 5G, allows surveillance into your home everything that you are doing 24 7 in your home or outside your home they will be able to collect all that data on your whereabouts what you have on your person in your pocketbooks in your briefcases what you're buying at the store uh, they already know but um, when we go cashless, my God, they will have every bit of data on every individual. So when you hear people say, I don't care, I'm not doing anything wrong. They become the useful idiot, allowing all of this to take place. So, for those who have not read 1984, I really suggest you pick up that book and read it, because this is what we are living. As the novel opens, Winston feels frustrated by the oppression and rigid control of the party, which prohibits free thought, sex, and any expression of individuality. Individuality. Individuality in this country. It, it, they began chipping away at that with the uh, corporate America. I mean, right after World War II, Americans became these automatons, automatons that, that just, you know, they wore the suit, they wore the tie, they all looked alike, they carried the briefcase, they walked into the corporate uh, world, they did their job, they came home, the wives were pretty much all the same. They loved their new gadgets, the, the electric can openers, and oh, the television comes on the scene, and everyone began to live pretty much the same life. And individuality has been socially engineered out of us, that we actually socially engineer one another. We shut one another up by having, oh, a different opinion, or, my God, you have beliefs, but I don't have those beliefs, and that's enough for people to say, unsubbed, I mean, really? And it is, unfortunately, one of the reasons why very few people have courage to go against their, uh, the grain of their social network, their families, their friends, you know, to speak a different opinion than they hold. And it's gotten so bad now that you have a different opinion with someone, uh, you know, uh, you know, in families, I'm, I'm seeing it more and more. Families are literally breaking up because they have a different opinion or uh, they're just trying to educate them about vaccines or um, the, the 5G dangers. That's enough for families to literally, relationships are being destroyed. 
and this is this is something I just never thought that I would live but many of us are living it um, Winston works in the Ministry of Truth where he alters historical records to fit the needs of the party well guess what when you see our society change so drastic, so radically, and so quickly, where children now are no longer carrying those hard copied books to school because everything is on the computer, this digital age will give them such ease to rewrite history and to memory hold those who don't go along with the official narrative and we're seeing that right now the ministry of truth is is control of all the things from which people could garner their opinions they provide their own twist on history current events entertainment education and the arts the people of Oceania believe them because there isn't enough information to believe anything else the questioning the ministry is a thought crime punishable by horrible torture or worse part of Winston's job is to turn anyone who doesn't follow the ministry line into an unperson erase them from history as though they never existed so you can watch Ben Swan's video by clicking on the link. Um, but yes, it is happening right now. We are living it. We are living in the world of 1984. And the way things are going, it isn't long before we will see only what they, the people with the power of money, to make it happen, want us to see. But when you think about questioning the ministry of truth it's a thought crime punishable by horrible torture or worse I want to bring your attention to a couple of videos um, and I'm just gonna let you listen to a few minutes of this video this woman uh, from the UK was detained at a mental health facility for claiming 5G and Wi-Fi radiation is harmful to health. Just to give you the background of it, um, a couple of a couple of months ago, um, my neighbour and I both started experiencing headaches and some lethargy and, and bits and pieces and didn't feel quite right. And I'd gone out walking with a dog. Just this was just about four weeks ago now, which was after the headaches had started. And I'd noticed a massive new um, phone mast. Now, I knew 5G wasn't enabled because it wasn't showing the 5G or anything on the phone. But I spoke to three and I thought, well, I'll just check and you know, see whether, you know, what's happening. And the manager there confirmed that it was indeed a new larger capacity mast that the 5G wasn't on yet. So, I mean, I, I know that it's not actually activated, but my concern was, well, is this what's causing the headache? I'm not quite sure. Um, I then continued to do some further research into the 5G implications, which I'd already been aware of some of it, just, you know, I kind of hadn't thought it would come into England yet. Uh, so I, did, I, did, I found a bit more research and stuff, and then I decided to take that research to my GP so that they could then figure out, you know, are, are there a lot of people getting additional headaches or symptoms, and to just give them a bit of information to be aware of the, all my symptoms. And I also spoke to the fire service in Finn Pearly. Um, and who else was there? Um, so yeah, anyway, so I spoke to the fire service. And <clears throat> the doctor basically didn't want to look at any of the evidence at all. So I got there, and instead of looking at the evidence, you know, I had a whole bag of it. I had my laptop with me. I had you know, various papers with me. I had all the information on the sites I wanted to show. She literally didn't want to look at it at all. She just came at me from the end of the night. Yeah, you've been under a lot of stress. No, I haven't. I'm fine. And it was clear to me that I needed to get the hell out of it because I got the impression that she just wanted to fetch me at the time. I had that horrible feeling. 
Why, why, did, you, why, did, why did you think that at the time? Did, did, did she say something to you? She wasn't willing to look at any evidence and then she started going down the road, you know, how are you feeling? You know, you seem very, very stressed. Well, obviously I'm stressed because I'm coming to you with evidence of something that's potentially harmful and I wanted them to listen and then she didn't want to know. So I, I just got a bad, a bad feeling about it, which was right, because later in that evening I started getting um, retail calls on my phone and <clears throat> the next day I'm literally just sitting out in the bar, my son's around with his girlfriend, making dinner. And there's about six or seven police outside, a three or four mental health professionals. No one had conducted any form of assessment with me. All I had done was my face-to-face -face with the doctor trying to get her to look at evidence that she wouldn't. So literally all of these people came in, the decision was already made that I was getting infection. There was no discussing it because, you know, the mind had already been made up. And, and they, they were just basically arguing with me that you must be delusional and by me and blah, 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 blah. And you mentioned something about President Trump, I can't remember what I said. But oh, they were basically just trying to, you know, to make out that I was some nuts. And they asked me my opinions on Trump. And I said, I'm political. I don't vote. I'm not going to get into that one here. All right. Uh, we are living a time when <laughs> uh, these so called free countries that we live in when we have information and information that is in studies by scientists that something is harmful and we bring it to our doctor because we're experiencing symptoms and then we get locked up something is seriously wrong here and those of you in the UK my god See, the problem is, is that we allow this, we allow this to continue and get worse and worse and worse. I mean, clearly, things have gotten really bad. Well, they're bad here, but in the UK, that that could happen to a woman who goes to her doctor and is talking about the health effects of, you know, 5G or microwaves and, and she gets locked up. That should scare the crap out of everyone, not scare them into paralysis, but scare them into action to stop what is clearly a dictatorship, a tyranny, in the worst kind of way. But it's not just this woman. Here is... Uh, Okay, good. Um, uh, Ian Crane, Government Suppression of 5G Health Risks. And this was a live stream, so the, it, it's, the pixels are not quite right. And the audio has a little bit of problem, but listen to what he has to say. End of this, this part of the act. act. It's, it's fear, fear or provocation, provocation of violence. violence. The person is guilty, guilty of an offense if he, she, was uh, using a tool towards another person, person threatening, abusive, or in or, or distributes, plays any writing sign or other visible representation which is threatening, abusive, or insulting. Now, this carries up to six months' imprisonment. But uh, there has to be intent to cause that person to believe that immediate unlawful violence will be used against them or any other person, or, or to provoke, provoke the immediate use of unlawful, unlawful violence by that person or another, or whereby that person is likely to believe that such violence will be used, or it is likely that such violence will be provoked. So, there was uh, some um, toing and froing between um, Mark's uh, solicitor and the Crown Prosecution Service yesterday. Uh, at one point, the Crown Prosecution Service were uh, trying to accept a less to charge indicative of the Back, back they're, they're starting, starting to get nervous, nervous that they can't make the original charge and uh, fortunately of course uh, mark rejected that um, that, um, that invitation all right i'm very sorry i thought that i had um i may have mm, i clearly messed up i'm sorry let me go to an article mark Steele, in the uk um now i thought he was from scotland but he may be from England. Mark Steele was a activist. He he was a, a loud voice trying to get these these five G 
antennas to come down and or not go up and he had science you know I mean his arguments were backed up by many scientific studies so what happened alright so the 5G mobile phone technology is based upon military microwave battlefield interrogation technology linked directly to the massive increase in PTSD and suicide among ex-service personnel. Gateshead in the northeast of England is one a testbed for both 5G and lead street lighting. Local businessman Mark Steele has openly questioned the wisdom of unleashing this technology on the civilian population of Gateshead. Gateshead City Council have refused to address the issues raised by Mark Steele and now City Council Leader Martin Gannon and Gateshead Mayor Jill Green are seeking to establish a permanent gagging order preventing Mark Steele from expressing his scientifically supported concerns anywhere. You can't voice them, you can't write them. So the establishment is clearly trying to shut down all opposition using legal means and any other. The charade of UK democracy is being washed away by court rulings which are obliterating parliamentary authority. The corporatocracy has persuaded a Gateshead court to back Gateshead City Council to silence a 5G campaigner, Mark Steele. He is now unable to speak and to write about 5G. So he has his brother now speaking for him. Gentlemen, um, my, my name's Graham Steele. Uh, I probably sound a bit like Mark Steele, but I'm not. I'm Mark's brother. And the reason why I'm putting this video up is because, as some of you might have heard through the grapevine, Gated Council have gagged my brother because what they don't want him to do, right, they don't want him to expose. The, the criminality, criminality that's going on at Gateshead Council in relationship to these, the, the 5G telecoms transmitters and the lights that they say these transmitters, transmitters or for switching off and on. Well, and he points out all of the health effects. Mark Steele did point out the health effects, um, the increase in suicide the stillbirths that are taking place. What, what do you, are you having a response to what you're hearing? A woman gets put into a psychiatric institution because she simply says to her doctor, you know, that she's having symptoms and then she starts talking about the 5G and she's done the research and there are scientific studies, thousands of scientific studies that prove the, that there are so many um, symptoms related to microwaves and there are more and more studies coming out about 5G and how dangerous 5G is to our health. put in a psychiatric institution. This man, a businessman, who clearly has done the research, now he is shut up. Okay, we are looking at a tyranny that we cannot deny anymore. And frankly, I don't even think that we have, you know, these separate governments, certainly not the Western countries. I think we have lost our sovereignty to a greater one world government already. It's just not, it hasn't been officially 
announced. But that is what we are living. And we are all in this together. We are all in this together. The hearing, Mark Steele's hearing, was conducted in secret, no public gallery allowed, or media. It was legislating in secret um, and is now officially gagged. But then he goes into America, you know, talking about, uh, here, the leftist media have dominated American minds for decades. The lies they told were readily accepted as fact. That kind of mind control is no longer working for them. Oh, you need to come over here. <laughs> it's still working, trust me. Um, but he says, thanks to the internet. Uh, well, there's a small percentage of Americans who are quote unquote awake and understand what's happening, but most don't care to even know. And that is, um, I've said it before, our fellow Americans are our biggest enemy. And I also, you know, I, I'm going to link below to some articles and uh, video. I'll let you listen to one. You know, here is the FCC uh, chairman now, Ajit Pai, who is actually in front of Congress claiming that while the FCC is not a health agency, that our standards are perfectly fine. Those standards unchanged since 1996. This is Trump's appointee to be head of the FCC, who is a Verizon. He was uh, an attorney for Verizon and a lobbyist for Verizon. That's who fills the FCC, the telecommunications industry. So, um, this is only one and a half minutes. Is a cell tower going up in your neighborhood? Two dozen cell phone repeaters installed in front of their homes. Wireless carriers are installing millions of them across the country to enable the new 5G technology. But scientists and public health officials across the country are pushing back against the rollout of 5G, citing new studies they say prove harm from exposure to wireless radiation. It's critical that the United States win this race. A group of experts are now saying the results of some tests are pretty surprising. In an open letter to the United Nations, more than 250 medical and public health professionals from around the world are warning of an emerging health and environmental crisis regarding wireless radiation, which has now been linked to miscarriages, brain development problems, and even cancer. This is constant bombardment outside of our bedroom window, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for many years. They have no place in front of homes and residential neighborhoods. In the end, American consumers will be the beneficiaries of these efforts. We don't have representatives in Washington. We have a facade of a government. Yeah, we vote. And then we actually think that these people that we vote for are representing us. They have not been representing us for decades. In the early 80s, I saw that corporations had already taken over our government. And unfortunately, Congress and states, state, uh, your state representatives, have passed legislation that have allowed the telecommunications carte blanche to put these cell antennas up wherever they want, wherever they want. And it's very dangerous. But how could, how could the telecommunications industry have such influence 
money, 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 money. Um, and here, this was posted two days ago. AT&T announces five more U.S. cities to receive sweat-inducing and risky 5G radiation towers and infrastructure. And, you know, I think it's funny with these announcements because they're rolling it out all over the place. And do you think that they're announcing their rollouts before they're actually kind of rolled out. 5G before the end of 2018, Houston. I will tell you that Houston already has their 5G cell towers. Louisville, New Orleans, San Antonio, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Nashville, Orlando, San Diego, San Francisco, San Jose, Atlanta, Raleigh, North Carolina, Oklahoma City, Waco, Texas, Indianapolis, Oklahoma City. It's going up all over. And Trump, oh, well, he's going to subsidize the rollout into rural America because he's so wanting. He's so wanting all of you in these rural small towns all across the country to have access to 5G so you can download videos faster. Now, the speed I don't think it's even going to be all that noticeable. Reason for the rollout is this is the electronic grid that will imprison all of us. Congress hands over to the telecommunications industry the right to put these antennas on your property and you have no say. But do you think that that is uh, what's happening in the UK with the gagging of these activists and the throwing them into psychiatric hospitals is going to just not come to this country? Oh, it's coming. Because what happens in one Western country, well, it's a global plan. It's a plan for the world. So it's all coming to everybody. Russians could face jail for not deleting news judged fake. Now, do you think in Russia the fake news is the news that comes out of their government news propaganda sites, outlets? Of course not. It's going to be the news that they deem fake and it's the truth. You know, any dissent of the official narrative, you go to jail. Or you get sectioned into a psychiatric hospital. I will link to all of this below. There are, there are countless articles now coming out, and they are they're all about the dangers of 5G. More and more studies reveal that this technology is extremely dangerous. But I find it interesting. These two paragraphs, wireless companies and their friends at the FCC, have decided that Congress moves too slowly, and they're afraid that the Streamline Act won't be passed this session. So what is the FCC going to do? They're going to streamline it themselves. Oh, how could the FCC trump, <laughs> trump Congress? Because though people think that there are committees and uh, that Congress actually has the power over the FCC, it is not true. The FCC is kind of like the uh, Federal Reserve. They get to do what they want to do, and no one has oversight or regulatory power over them. And all you have to do is do the research to find out that what I just said is true. So, 
we have been living a corporate takeover for decades. And now we're living a, a tyranny that really cannot be denied. And for those who want to deny it, fine. But if you have children, you're leaving your children this tyranny. And I hope your children never come up to you and say, what did you try to do to get this stopped? And I hope you can face them and tell them the truth. And not lie to them and tell them that you fought with everything that you had. I'm talking to an awful lot of parents who don't do a thing. 